In this video I'm going to look at seven key turnovers from Revolver in the 2018 Pro Championship men's final between San Francisco Revolver and Pride of New York. All the turnovers share a common theme and this video covers half of the at the time reigning champions 14 turnovers in this game. Do you like that gamble on that play? In this clip Revolver have just fielded the pool with the side stack set up. Eli Friedman moves across the field early in the stool, but his defender, Chris Kosher, does not believe that Friedman will receive a pass and takes the opportunity to poach. Keeping his eye on the thrower and knowing that he's beside the space revolver looking to isolate, he reacts to the pivot and is already on his second step when the disc is released. Note how inactive the revolver players in the side stack appear compared to the pony defenders. In fact, Kosher's original mark is picked up by number 17 Ben Katz at the front of the stack, and there are several other players being poached. Keep your eye on Ben Yacht. With the disc on the far sideline and his player repositioning, he scans the field constantly, checking the thrower, the isolated space, and keeping an eye on the active off-screen cutter. He makes a clear decision to leave his mark and attack the space, likely as a direct reaction to the off-screen cutter getting open. Yacht is able to take a shorter line to intercept the path of the disc, and starts the move 1.1 seconds before the disc leaves the thrower's hands, resulting in a clean interception. Nothing there, comes back on a reset to Jordan Macy. Marcy, excuse me, Marcy with it. Sends a dangerous pass. There's a glitch in the broadcast at the key moment in this turnover. Jordan Marcy receives a backward pass and quickly directs his focus downfield, but is not able to hit George Stubbs' undercut as the dump defender is sagging into the throwing lane. Instead of throwing to Ashton Joy, who could potentially hit Stubbs' cut, he opts to continue to look for downfield options. Grant Lindsley has two large isolated spaces to work with, and he fakes out his defender before attacking the nearside space. Mike Drost has been watching the play develop, and he attacks the space as soon as Lindsley fakes. Note how Drost looks for the poach as soon as his player seems inactive, and how his teammate, who is guarding another inactive player in the stack, immediately covers for him to neutralise the deep threat, should the poach be unsuccessful. The Jordan Marcy. Marcy to slack it. John Wadach gets the poach D this time. You can see he has a look at the initial breakside cut, but chooses to stick to his mark Simon Higgins, who could punish an unsuccessful poach quickly. As Higgins is moving towards the inactive space, Wadach sees an open cut attacking the front corner, and makes a decision to cover the cut 0.5 seconds before the disc is released, giving Marcelo Sanchez no chance of making the catch. Stubbs is not usually one of those throwers to play with gloves. He likes the bare-handed touch and he's actually opting for gloves in this humidity. Loads of stuff happens in this sequence. First check out Antoine Davis's throw and go deep cut. He's open and he gestures to Stubbs, who should have pulled out of his deep cut earlier instead of drawing the defender into the space. This move should then make Stubbs free under, but the move is neutralized by number 17 Ben Katz, who gets the interception in the end. So where did Katz come from? Early on in the sequence, you can see Katz loosening his leash on Jordan Marcy, who is relatively inactive as a third handler. Katz keeps an eye on the downfield space and movement, and very nearly gets an interception on the pass to Davis. Davis's deep cut naturally draws the eye of the, both the thrower, of Stubbs' defender, and of Katz. Marcy reappears and Katz intercepts, so what happened to Marcy whilst all this was going on? Initially, the backfield is clogged. Joy could have moved downfield to take his defender out of the way, but this isn't a priority for the revolver offence, which creates large spaces downfield. Marcy makes a move towards the disc, but his timing is off as the thrower's attention has been taken by Davis' deep cut, by Stubbs, and then Lindsley also getting free under. Mike Drost flash poaches off the dump to stop both the options to Lindsley and Marcy, so when Marcy gets free of Drost, the thrower takes the option, but is caught out by Katz appearing at such an unexpected angle. And once again, another pony defender, this time Ben Spielman, just in the lane, able to cause trouble. At the start of this sequence, we see Ben Spielman leave the inactive third handler for a bit, which he wisely pulls out of to avoid a dangerous play. Note how his teammate immediately covers for him, stopping the quick pass and halting Revolver's flow. Antoine Davis sets off deep and Grant Lindsley rightly comes under after a jab step. However, Lindsley's defender, Conrad Schlower, decides to track the deep cut 0.9 seconds before the disc is released, and has good position to leap and get the interception. Without the jab step, it's possible Schlower would have covered Lindsley under instead. Taking that 
ill-advised shot to Antoine Davis earlier, and then Ben Katz just the missed execution there. The first poach comes from the back of the stack when Ben Katz recognizes a breakside continuation threat. The poached player gesticulates to the far corner, and Lindsley, on disc, reacts appropriately with a realistic fake, which gets two defenders biting. Davis reacts to this a fraction of a second late with his cut, and Snyder lingers in the break space for a second, which stops the throw and neutralizes the sequence of advantages which were opened up by the previous break throw. The turn throw is a slight execution error which is made unsavable by another poaching defender, so let's see where he came from. He doesn't chase his mark, who is clearing to the back of the stack. He keeps his eye on the thrower and he reacts just after the disc is released, forcing the catcher to bid in a very small space. Revolver have taken one approach to offense to the extreme, i.e. unbalancing the space on the field, which has worked for them up until now because it plays to their athleticism and counters strict one-to-one -one marking. Defensively, New York are turning the large spaces Revolver's offense creates into traps, using them as bait to predict and intercept the play. They are able to cover for each other when making these poaching bids, as the inactive Revolver players are mostly bunched together in order to create the large spaces on the field, meaning defenders are in close enough proximity to help each other and to cover multiple options at the same time. New York, with Brian Jones heading up their coaching team, have implemented an effective counter strategy which turns the imbalances of Revolver's side stack against them. As stacking is currently by far the most popular offensive tactic, I believe teams at all levels would benefit from implementing the key elements of being heads up and using teamwork to counter the large spaces stacks create. Half of Revolver's turnovers in this final were as a direct result of Pony's poach style defense. So what are the key elements of this defense we can take away? One, recognize when the player you are marking is inactive and get your head up to survey the field. Two, Identify any obvious large spaces the offense has created, particularly the ones you are the closest defender to. 3. Anticipate when the pass is going to be made and attack the space before the disc is in the air. 4. Adjust your marking and positioning to cover for any bidding teammates as soon as you see them commit. For more analysis videos, strategy thoughts, to buy discs or to book a video analysis session with your team, check out felixultimate.com. Subscribe and turn on notifications to hear about new videos when they come out. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you again soon.